In this video we'll look at the best computer for Blender. This is aimed at beginners and I attempt to break down what components are the most important and what to look out for when buying a computer specifically for Blender. I'll be talking a bit about whether you should be going Mac or PC, differences with laptops, can you use Blender on an old slow machine? And also I'm going to show you what I think the perfect mid-budget machine is. Now I get asked what's the best computer a lot and most of the people asking have a budget of around 1,000 to 1,500 pounds or dollars, roughly the same these days. So I'm going to show you what I think the best computer for that price is. However, Blender is an amazing program that can run on really slow machines, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Now, this is a culmination of my experience looking at lots of different comparisons and articles, but also a special thanks goes to PC specialists who are leading system builders for their expert advice on the subject. And they agreed to send me their version of the best budget machine for testing. It's also important for me to say that I am sponsored by NVIDIA and PC Specialist, but that's not influenced the choice of my components recommended here, which will become clear later. Now, if you just want someone to say, here's the optimum configuration and best value computer, then I'll be showing you that later. If you just want to skip to that part, the chapters are listed in the description. But first I'm going to start with the question, do you need a super duper computer to run Blender? Well, Blender has a minimum spec that the people from Blender suggest. You can see it listed here and it's fairly basic, but it does say a graphics card is required. Don't worry, I'll talk more about what a graphics card is in a moment. But many computers, especially laptops, don't actually come with graphics cards. So that seems to rule out a lot of machines. However, I would say they are being fairly conservative with how well Blender does even on slower machines. Not that I would suggest not having a graphics card when you buy a new machine, but you'll be surprised what you can get away with with Blender. Here's me testing Blender on a four to five year old Asus Zenbook, which will cost around 250 pounds these days. And most of that money goes on the touch screen, which is not important to Blender. So it's old, a bit slow and has no graphics card. Yet here I am making a chess piece in Blender. This of course is not recommended as you might encounter a few crashes, especially if you try to do something slightly more complicated, but it does show what's possible on older machines. My suggestion for those that have a really slow computer is to keep to really low poly modeling, hone your skills until you hopefully can afford something a little bit more powerful. Low poly modeling can produce some wonderful, beautiful stylized renders, so you don't have to have a monster computer to produce amazing art. So when do you need to go for something a bit more powerful and expensive? Well, when your scenes get more complicated with things like sculpting, physics simulations, complex lighting with fog and atmospherics, you can have transparent objects with caustics, then there's subsurface scattering. These are the types of things that will really slow Blender down, especially if you're on a slower machine. A lot of the time, the more realistic you go, the more you need in terms of power. Probably the biggest and most crippling thing that most artists find slows them down is render times. So in order to see your image to its fullest, you need to render it. A slow computer will take much longer and a faster one will be much faster, of course. All this together is why it's important to make the right choice for your budget when it comes to choosing a computer. So let's think about the most important computer components that you need to spend the most of your budget on. Now it's important to say that no component is truly more important than another. Without all the main components, a computer will not work, and if you have a particularly weak component, then that can cause what's often referred to as a bottleneck, which will stop more powerful components working at their most optimum. However, some are probably worth focusing more of your budget on than others. So with that said, let's start with the CPU and the GPU. So the CPU and the GPU are probably the most important considerations when buying a new machine for use with Blender. And this is where the bulk of your money will go, so we'll start with the CPU. Now this is the central processing unit and is responsible for all the tasks your computer does. So when you build models in Blender, the CPU is doing the hard work. So obviously it's vital to how fast Blender will run. Now people that work with computers will often say the motherboard is the most important thing. And the motherboard is what your computer components are all attached to. And yes, it is very important, but actually if you buy a powerful CPU, it often has to come with a good motherboard in order to work. So you don't have to worry too much about the motherboard when looking at PC specs, which makes life a little bit easier. Unfortunately, CPUs can be the most confusing thing to try and research. You've got clock speeds, the type of brand, how many cores has it got, you've got multi-thread performance versus single thread. So what does it all mean? Well, let's take a look at Blender's minimum requirements again. It asks for a quad-core machine. 
And put simply, having several cores is like having lots of mini CPUs inside of one big CPU. So you would naturally think that multiple cores gives you better performance. However, Blender will only use multiple cores and multi-threading for certain things. So does that mean that it's better to have one really powerful single core? Well, it's not that simple either. Things like simulations and rendering will make the most out of multiple threads, but Blender doesn't use them all the time. So cloth simulations, collisions, smoke, fire, and so on will use most of the cores, but things like general modeling, animation, and sculpting can't fully utilize all the cores as far as I understand. So actually it depends a little bit on what you're doing, which makes it even more confusing. So how can you tell if a CPU is any good? Well, rather than looking at any numbers in the names and how many cores it has, it's better just to look at the benchmarks. Benchmarks compare different CPUs based on certain test criteria, like running games and doing lots of multiple tasks, and then it puts them into an order and gives them a rank. Here's a typical benchmark from Tom's Hardware Guide. And this can help you get a rough idea, but they are very confusing and not always as helpful as you might hope because they're assessing such a wide variety of tasks. But actually we want to know how it works within Blender. Well, luckily there is a CPU benchmark for Blender specifically. So here you can see the Blender benchmark. It's nice and simple. It's got a median score and essentially the higher the number, the better. So it massively simplifies the complexity. Now, unfortunately, this is just based on rendering, so it's not completely accurate to say this one is better than this one, as there are lots of different tasks within Blender, such as having a dense and complex scene with a huge number of polygons, that some processors, maybe those with better single thread performance, might be better at handling than others. But it is great for getting a good picture of where your processor stands, generally speaking. I'll talk more about this benchmark and which one to go for a little bit later on. But now let's look at the other top component to put your money into, and that's the GPU, the graphics processing unit. Now these are for rendering. So when you use material preview mode or render mode, the GPU is being used. Now, strangely, the GPU can often be the most expensive component in your machine, but it only does that one task. It just goes to show how important rendering is. Now, GPUs are a bit easier in some ways to compare, but can still be problematic. Take this chart, for example. It's certainly simpler than the CPU chart, but it still doesn't give the whole story. It looks like the AMD cards are fairly good, and actually they are cheaper than their equivalent Nvidia cards, so you might assume that you should buy them. However, Nvidia way outperforms AMD cards, and this is mainly down to optics. Now, when rendering, you may have noticed there's a thing called samples, and the lower the samples, the more noise you tend to get. Here I've set my render preview mode to cycles. And as I move around my object, you can see it takes a moment to update as the image slowly becomes more clear the more samples it uses. And what we're now able to use is a denoise option. And that's both in the viewport and the render. Under the denoiser, I can turn on open image denoise, and that will use whatever hardware is available in your computer to denoise the image. And it takes a little bit of time here, as you can see but it's certainly a lot quicker and it tidies the image up and makes it much less noisy, as you'd expect. Now, if I change this across to optics, which is available on the Nvidia cards, you can see it speeds up this process quite considerably and I can move around my object and get almost real-time feedback. And you can imagine if I've got lots of frames and an animation to render, then this speed improvement is going to make a major difference. So at the moment, even with the extra cost, Nvidia is still the better choice and probably will be for a while looking at the rate of developments. Now you might think because I'm sponsored by Nvidia that I'm going to be biased. Luckily, once again, to make our life easier, Blender has a benchmark for GPUs as well. This is more accurate than the CPUs chart because it's based on rendering and that's all the GPUs do. And you can see that the Nvidia cards absolutely dominate the charts which is why they are currently the best choice and some would say the only choice at the moment. Now for the rest of the components, I'm going to start showing you what PC specialist and myself think is the optimum PC and I'll talk about the components as we go through the specification. And this machine is what I would call a creator's PC costing around £1,200. Now a quick advert for PC specialist here because I'm a big fan of their computer systems and these days because of the mistakes I've made I would always go with a reputable systems builder and specifically one which deals not only with gaming PCs but creator PCs because they understand which components work with others and they can configure it in the most effective way. I particularly like PC specialist because you can go through and choose components and it will highlight certain things that don't work together, such as if you've got a power unit that's too low for your GPU and CPU, or the case doesn't have enough space and so on. 
I've used a lot of different machines and the most reliable have come from PC Specialist. And yes, I have bought from them before I was sponsored by them. So the specification for our mid-range PC are as follows. And for all those that just wanted to know which PC to buy, well, here you go. And there are two places I've marked out that if you have a higher budget, that's where I would spend more money, which I'll explain more why as we go through. So to start with, the CPU is an AMD Ryzen 5 5600X. It's a versatile CPU with six cores and it's got good single core performance. In terms of which brand of CPU performs better in Blender, you have two leading brands, AMD and Intel. And AMD tends to outperform Intel and you get more power for your money from AMD. Let's look at the Blender benchmarks again to see where our CPU sits. Do of course remember that this is only rendering, so multiple cores with multiple threads will do a little bit better here, but not necessarily in Blender as a whole. But initially we can't see our CPU and when we search for it, it's fairly low down the list. However, let's look at one of the top CPUs and how much it costs. So yes, it's around £4,000, so it's not really a fair comparison. The CPU I regularly use in my main machine is an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core, and it's just under £500. And our Ryzen 5600X is under £200. So you can see it's a good price to performance ratio. And also my more powerful CPU requires a bigger power unit and more cooling, so it ends up being a little bit more expensive on those terms as well. This is actually one of two places where if you have a higher budget, then I would spend a little bit more money and you'll see better performance and it shouldn't be bottlenecked by any other components. In terms of the motherboard, we have an Asus Prime B550+. Plus. Again, you don't have to worry too much about this as newer motherboards that support the processor tend to be good. So how about the graphics card? We've got an Nvidia RTX 3060, and I think this is the ultimate price to performance graphics card for Blender. Let's see where it sits in the benchmarks. The 3060 makes it to the top page. Now graphics cards can be very expensive and I've got the 3090 and that costs around one and a half thousand pounds. The 3060 is under 400. So it's a great powerful graphics card which has optics so it's really good in Blender and it's a good price. Now onto the RAM, which is the last of the most important components. Here we've got 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4. And RAM is basically super fast memory and is very important for Blender when you have large and complex scenes. All the information about that scene is stored in your RAM. So a very detailed environment with grass and bushes with lots of polygons will need a lot of RAM. You'll certainly want DDR4 as that's the best at the moment and the fastest. In terms of the amount, this system has 16 gigabytes, which is a good amount for the mid-level Blender user. However, this is another place where you can spend a bit more money, especially if you're interested in producing bigger scenes. So upgrading to 32 gigabytes of RAM would be a good upgrade and not too expensive, but I wouldn't worry too much about going much further than that. Rather concentrate on upgrading the CPU as you can keep upgrading the CPU for better performance, but you probably won't see too much difference between 32 and 64 gigabytes of RAM. Onto the hard drive, we've got a one terabyte M.2 SSD. Now with hard drives, again, there's two considerations. There's both the size and the speed. I would definitely go for an SSD, which stands for solid state drive, rather than an HHD, as they're a lot faster. There are two types of SSD. There's the SATA and the M.2. The M.2 is that bit faster, and I like what PC specialists have done here. This is a very fast hard drive, so the computer will load quickly and save files slightly faster. You won't notice much difference there, but it's not that big as hard drives go in terms of storage. But for the most part, Blender scenes and renders do not take up loads of space. So for me, the speed of the hard drive is more important than the space, and one terabyte is easily enough. However, if you're planning on playing a few big games and editing videos, you'll probably need a little bit more. So maybe go for an SATA that's slightly bigger. However, if you manage your drive and folders well, getting rid of things that you don't need, then this is the perfect size for a low budget in my opinion. The other components are less important, but still essential. The power supply is a 650 watt, so it will handle the CPU and the graphics card nice and comfortably. Those are the most power hungry things on your computer. We've got a Corsair Carbide gaming case, which will fit everything in comfortably. Now this system case comes with two pre-installed fans, but PC specialists have added a further two to ensure things stay cool and quiet. 
particularly when you're rendering. They've also opted to call the CPU with their PC specialist Frostflow 100 version 3, and Blender will push any machine to the max, so managing the cooling is essential. And of course, PC specialists understand that, that's why they put these extra things in. This system is using Windows 11, and it's worth mentioning that Blender apparently runs faster and better on Linux, but generally most people are using Windows machines and therefore having Windows is probably going to be more suitable for most. So that's the budget to mid-level creator PC that we've chosen, and I decided to put it through its paces with some sculpting. It was comfortable with about 6 million polygons, and I decided to go across the Dyne Topo and create some weird, crazy monster thing. I had two monitors plugged in, so one was my drawing tablet and one was my reference monitor. It was a really smooth experience. I also did some other tests with particle systems, things like that, just to see how many polygons it could take, and it was really comfortable with high, dense scenes. And sculpting is really about your processor and how powerful that is. Of course, the RTX card is absolutely fantastic, the 3060. I'm using it here for a render preview, and it's really fast and really effective. So what about laptops then? Well, all the same rules apply as above with regards to the most important components, but generally you will end up paying more for a laptop as the components have to be carefully managed and designed so they take up less space, draw less power and create less heat. So there are a lot of limitations to trying to get everything to fit neatly into a smaller space. Therefore, you can't get the same performance from a laptop because of these constraints and you end up paying more money for less performance. So if you have the space for a big PC, then definitely go for that instead. The good thing about a laptop is it's a bit easier to look at the reviews, so obviously look out for those. And again, look at the benchmarks for the key components, as I've mentioned before. So how about a Mac? Many people prefer Macs, a big reason being the operating system, and understandably so. Programs will crash less often on a Mac OS. They've also got good components and they last a long time, although a good system builder will use good components that will last just as long. Macs are also very good when it comes to compatibility. So if you're looking at getting something like a display tablet, which you can sculpt and texture on in Blender, it will work really well straight out of the box with a Mac. Unfortunately, it's not always the case with Windows. Macs tend to be a lot more expensive for the equivalent PC performance. Macs in the past have not performed that well with Blender, but more recently Blender has now started to utilize the power of the Mac. But if you look at the benchmarks, it's still not there in terms of speed, especially for the cost. I keep seeing reports of the new M1 Ultra and its performance, but when you look at the Blender benchmarks, it's not really doing that well for the cost. If you compare it to the processor in our budget machine, it actually isn't that better, but is considerably more expensive. One of the main issues with Macs is they don't have a separate graphics cards. So it's doing all the rendering on the CPU. It's a good powerful CPU, but it just can't compete with the RTX cards, especially when you put optics into the mix. The interesting thing here is that if you are having to do lots of mobile work and maybe having to work off battery power a lot, then the Mac might be a good way to go. Its power draw is much lower than the equivalent PC laptop and much, much lower when it comes to the equivalent PC. So that may make a big difference to you. If you love the Mac interface and all that goes with it, it's not a bad purchase, but it's not as good performance wise as the equivalent PC. What about getting a second hand machine? Well, it's a little bit tougher because you don't know how well the machine has been made. There are some pretty badly made systems out there. Even some pre-built machines by some top manufacturers are badly made. So it can be a little bit difficult. The laptops and computers that I've bought secondhand from places like eBay have generally been the worst performing computers I've owned. A few of the components broke and the computer crashed more often, but that's just my experience. You may have a different experience. If you do want to look at the second hand market, the same rules apply in terms of the components and what to look out for. You could even go for slightly older components like the RTX 2000 series, which still perform really great, but they're obviously a lower price because they're older components. Bear in mind with secondhand machines that things like power supply and fans have a limited lifespan, so you are getting something that may not last as long. So hopefully you have a better idea now of what computer to buy and the different components for getting the most out of your Blender experience and which areas to spend most of your budget. If you have any questions, then do comment below. I've listed the computer that we talked about in this video in the description, and I've put my own in there as well so you can kind of compare. Do also have a read through of the comments as that might also give you some ideas. Thanks to my sponsors for your support and advice, and thanks to you for watching. Until next time, happy blending.